As Chancellor of Richmond, the American International University in London, I hereby welcome you all and declare the 2011 graduation ceremony to be open. Chancellor, trustees, governors, faculty and staff, distinguished visitors, parents and families, and most importantly, our graduating students, welcome. Someone once joked that a graduation ceremony is an event where the speaker tells hundreds of students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. But it really is a time of celebration, to take pleasure in what you have achieved, to thank those who helped to get you here and to be with them. So it's a glorious day for you all. By successfully completing your program of studies and by earning the right to be awarded a degree, you have joined those who came before us and began several hundred years ago in our medieval past to earn degrees. That medieval tradition can be seen here today in the academic robes that have changed very little in a thousand years. And we're very pleased that they did arrive as well. The cap, gown, and hood that you wear represent the degree that you have earned and the university granting that degree. These robes remind us that learning in a community of scholars is an ancient and worthwhile habit. Your achievement has been recognized as worthy of distinction throughout those thousand years. While you might wonder exactly <clears throat> how your life here has any connection to that ancient world, <clears throat> the education, growth, and development of each individual committed to our charge has not changed in the many hundreds of years since these robes were first worn. Consider this letter, a letter from a student to his father. This is to inform you that I am studying at Oxford with the greatest diligence but the, but the matter of money stands greatly in the way of my promotion. As it, is, as it is now two months since I spent the last of what you sent me. The city is expensive, makes demands. I have to rent lodgings, buy necessaries, and provide for many other things which I cannot now specify. Wherefore, I respectfully beg that you may assist me. Does that sound familiar? <coughs> or this letter from a father to his son to his son who was studying in France. I have recently discovered that you live dissolutely and slothfully, preferring license to restraint and play to work, and strumming a guitar while the others are at their studies. You have read but one volume 
for your more industrious companions have read several. I exhort you to repent of your dissolute and careless ways that you may no longer be called a waster. The remarkable feature of these letters is that they were written in the 13th century. And so in this medieval pageant of parents paying and students playing, we might gain some perspective. When asked why a university degree is worthy of pursuit, many students respond with the answer to get a good job. And of course, it would be foolish to deny that such a goal forms part of a student's thinking and parents. But as you prepare to become a graduate, it would be well to think of the less tangible rewards of your education. When the early American founding father, Benjamin Franklin, suggested that an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest, he was speaking of something other than a banking career. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, Consider that the mark of an educated mind is to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. To entertain a thought without accepting it. More than 2,000 years later, Malcolm Forbes, the American business tycoon who founded Forbes magazine, said much the same thing, that the purpose of an education is to replace an empty mind with an open one. Open minds, open to debate, unafraid of curiosity, have thus been recognized as the value of an education for more than two millennia. Replacing a closed mind with an open one is what matters. Turning an empty mind into an open one is our mission. It is what the poet William Butler Yeats meant when he wrote that education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. And as you go forward with your newly minted degree, think of how your educational experiences have lit your fire, and how important it is to continue to read and to learn in order to keep that flame alive. When you came to Richmond, you ventured beyond your family and the safety of your home culture. If I had one piece of advice, it would be to continue to venture beyond the safety and comfort of what you know. That will be the key to happiness, to fulfillment, and to success. Congratulations. staff and students. Benjamin Franklin wrote to President Washington, the most important question to ask of anybody is what good are you going to do in the world? A statement echoed centuries later by Martin Luther King's question, what are you doing for others? Kevin Everett's life, whom we're honoring today, has been the embodiment of doing good for others. He spent most of his career within the city of London, which has given him a unique understanding of the city and business, uh, um, business processes. Uh, the, his most important role is his current role as treasurer and chairman of the board of St. John Cass's Foundation, the leading city of London charity one of the largest and oldest educational charities in England. And he's had that job for 20 years. The foundation is unique and represented in nursery, primary, secondary, and higher, higher education. Educated in Kent and London, qualified as an incorporated administrator, fellow of the Institute of Administrative Management. Kevin's working life began as an internal auditor in the iron and steels trade industry, became a volunteer youth leader in Tower Hamlets, continuing into that role until becoming a common councilman at the City Corporation of London. Kevin has also served as director of the London Tourist Board, and director of the Burnbeck Housing Association. While working with the ITV Telephone Trust, Kevin set up the Revolving Doors Agency, the UK's only charity dedicated to improving the lives of people caught up in a crisis of crime and mental illness. But it is his role as chairman and treasurer of the Sir, um, Sir, um, Sir John Cass Foundation 
but it is possibly his greatest achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, this, gen this person we're honoring today has increased the assets of the John Cash Foundation from nine million over 20 years to 89 million. That is an amazing achievement. He secured funding for uh, city academies. He's led to the restructuring of the foundation. He's an alderman and sheriff um, uh, of the City of London. Um, John Cass Foundation was set up uh, by originally an alderman and sheriff. It is funding an extraordinary number of uh, good causes. And we hope possibly they might consider supporting this university in the future. Kevin is an excellent leader with an open and honest communication style and is wonderful at motivating, developing, recognizing, and rewarding people for success. His ability to transform ideas and strategies into action and creating initiatives have pro has produced remarkable results. He's an exceptional organizational ambassador and negotiator and was even made a commander of the Order of the White Rose of Finland in recognition of his services to the Excellency of the Presidency um, um, of Finland. In 1999, Kevin was appointed an officer of the Most Venerable Order St. John by Her Majesty the Queen for his services to mankind. He's also been awarded the freedom of the City of London. Can I have the hood and the gown, please? <clears throat> great pleasure we uh, give you the degree of on, uh, honorary doctorate in Master of Business Administration. Would Deirdre Simpson stand please? Chancellor, Richmond is privileged to be able to honor one of its own today, a colleague whose life has been dedicated to building the institution over her 31 year service. Deirdre Simpson has been active in the inception and implementation of a number of Richmond's key programs and has also contributed professionally to other organizations that reflect her talents and interests. Born in Beckenham, Kent, Deirdre had a very international childhood due to her journalist parents who educated her in France, Spain, the US, as well as in the UK. She displayed a strong aptitude for languages, became involved in the arts and humanities, and completed her first degree at the University of Rochester in New York. She went on to take her MA in Russian studies at Georgetown University in Washington, DC, where she met Mark, a fellow student of Russian who has been her husband for over 40 years. <laughs> Deirdre's career began at the well-known the Emmett Willard School, located in upstate New York, where her involvement in a series of educational initiatives became hallmarks of her subsequent activities, particularly in the interface between academic learning and personal development. She joined Richmond in 1979 as the Dean of the Upper Division, where she set up and managed the structures of resident and student life. And later she was appointed advisor to study abroad students, and she taught Russian. She took a leading role in embedding experiential education at Richmond, and was responsible for creating the Career Apprenticeship Program, an initiative well ahead of its time now renamed the International Internship Program, Deirdre was responsible for putting Richmond at the forefront of international internship programming and can be proud of successfully enriching many students' academic careers, both at the graduate and the undergraduate levels. After more than 15 years as the internship director, Deirdre began to build the Alumni Association in order to offer networking opportunities around the world for Richmond's international students. Under her creative leadership, she can now boast of developing an alumni network with over 7,000 members from 139 countries. She retired in June 2010. 
In addition to her developmental leadership roles at Richmond, Deirdre continued her professional work with experiential education, where she founded and chaired the international section of the American National Society for Experiential Education. She was recognized by the NSEE for her extensive work, and Richmond was publicly commended for its influence in this area. Deirdre has worked for numerous charities and continues to contribute to a number of cultural organizations in both the UK and South Africa. Always a highly supportive and generous colleague with deep loyalty to the institution, Deirdre leaves a resounding legacy at Richmond. to you, Deirdre Simpson, and ask that you confer upon her the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Deirdre Simpson, in accordance with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Richmond, the American International University in London, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa of all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In witness thereof, we invest you with this hood and present this diploma. Congratulations. Chancellor, President, graduands, ladies and gentlemen, I am both honoured and humbled to receive the award of an honorary doctorate from this great and exciting university and, and to have been asked to speak on this wonderful occasion. On behalf of my fellow honorary graduates, may I thank the Chancellor for conferring our honours and to the university for bestowing it upon us. Also my thanks to Sir Cyril Taylor for his kind words, I hardly recognise myself. I congratulate each of you on your graduation today. Well done. I know that you are all extremely bright because it's taken me slightly longer than the three years it's taken you to receive my degree. <laughs> However, may I encourage you not to rest on your laurels but to continue to strive towards even higher goals. I believe that there are four requirements for success. These are learning, endeavour, community service and character. And these are not chosen at random. They are part of the core of a fulfilled and fulfilling life. The most important thing to remember is that each of these characteristics is the sum of many individual decisions. They embody a positive attitude backed by purpose. The only way to achieve your purpose is to take small actions every day. In the end, they all add up. My hope for you is that you will cultivate this attitude backed by purpose in your own lives. Whilst it would be easier to slide through life without a purpose and determination, it would not be fulfilling. Only by setting difficult goals and achieving them can we find true self-worth. Sir Winston Churchill said, success is never final, failure is never fatal, it is courage that counts. One final thing, each person's goals are different and what comes easy to one may be difficult for another. Therefore, help others to fulfil their dreams. This is a sure way to know that you are working towards fulfilling your own. In conclusion, I congratulate you all again, and in particular, all of your parents and families who have supported you over the past few years. Please would you give them and yourselves a round of applause.
deserve to be truly proud of your achievements. Enjoy yourselves and remember, as Mother Teresa said, life is a promise, fulfil it. Will the candidates for the degrees please stand? Mr. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and the Master of Arts degrees. In accordance with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Richmond, the American International University of London, I hereby confer upon you all the degree for which you're qualified, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Master. Master of Arts degrees for which you have worked so hard in order to gain qualification. All the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Alex Ray Campbell. Jessica Dalrymple. <laughs> Chelsea Garner. <laughs> Holly Meredith Gordon. Rebecca Diane Owens. Claire Louise Prestus. Maimuna Aboki. Mohit Ajwani. <laughs> Noor Al Baksami. <laughs> Darin Al Dewek. Majdulin Aldoek. <laughs> Noura Saud Al Saud. <laughs> Abdullah Al Zubair. Johara Mohammed Al Rashid <laughs> Sarah Al Yakut <laughs> Kerem Alptekin. Agatha Alva Gonzalez. <laughs> Jean.
Jessica Lynn Anderson. Fabian Avalos. Emily Martin Philippine Barrao. <laughs> Ashley Baronet. Blythe Brower. <laughs> Kayla Burton. <laughs> Nicole Keisha. Katharina Corkwell. <laughs> Tagaris Shekali. Thomas Cheney. <laughs> Pete Coolway. <laughs> Cesar George Coroblian. Mariam Magdalena Diallo. <laughs> Zaprian Dumbalski. <laughs> Sanai El Saga. Sharif El Kurdi, <laughs> Mohammed Zain Elahi, <laughs> Omar El Nesser. Ashley Faggianelli. <laughs> Mighty Fresato. <laughs> Relitsa Plamenova Georgieva. Kelly Lucille Goodrich. <laughs> Jane A. Griggs. <laughs> Charles Robert Haas. 
Sarah Jean Hale. <laughs> Julia Ann Hatmaker. <laughs> Claire Lisette Helfrey. Pierre Hens Tiso <laughs> Dave Colonzi <laughs> Roland Sinan Karim Kassa. Sami Kana. Shiro Kurihara. Mohamed Maher Lababedi. Juanis Leogali. <laughs> Renee Blade Lochtefeld. <laughs> Brendan Thomas Patrick McGee. Eric Steele Minor. <laughs> Taylor Malley. <laughs> Eleonora Marco. Alexandra Marsh. <laughs> Mahelet Alimehu Mekona. <laughs> Caitlin Myers. Grace Milam. <laughs> Sebastian Juan Miranda. <laughs> Keely Moyer. Joshua Narkivicious. <laughs> Bodin Neil Kamheng. <laughs> J. 
Jessica Marie Nutter. Sheila O'Donnell. Soraya Olama. Yasmin Olama. Harry Olson, <laughs> Dimitri Paraskeva, <laughs> Mayor Patel. Portia Peterson. Audrey Foom. Arjun Pillai. Morgan Holeb Potts. <laughs> Julian Prolman. <laughs> Sanjay Ignatius Raja. Tringa Ramandani. Omar Khaled Rami. Sarah Rassam. Taylor Ann Riley. Renata Jimenez Rocha. <laughs> Catherine Owens Rogers. Tristan Rowland. <laughs> Harold Rosbottom the third. <laughs> Jonathan Rotenberg. Hillary Blair Stat Sanders. <laughs> Tumini May Soba Sekibo. <laughs> Kristen Shaw.
Keia Shemukameto. Vimi Singh. Erica Louise Siego. <laughs> Jessica Trimingham Sleater. <laughs> Rachel Soufan. Catherine Lynn Spencer. <laughs> Viheka Stefanova Stoikova. <laughs> Ralph Henrik Svenblatt. Kaya Carolina Svenning. <laughs> Caitlin Sweeney. <laughs> Stephanie Ayo Marsha Tadavera. Timur Takabayev. <laughs> Marija Trachtenberg. Maria Cristina Trepcha. Bravo, Maria. Rukaya Umaru. Aisha Leila Ustunkaya. <laughs> Amanda Lynn Vanderbilt. <laughs> Paulina Vashenko. Erefua Wood. <laughs> Victoria Lydia Yepes Brown.
in accordance with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Richmond, the American International University of London, I hereby confer upon those graduates who, for one reason or another, were unable to attend today's ceremonies their degrees in absentia. Mr. Chancellor, it is my honour to present to you for the posthumous award of the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Professor Julia Anne Janet. Professor Janet was born in London and educated at St. Bernard's Convent, Slough. She obtained her Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Leicester and her Master's degree from the Institute of Education at the University of London. She was awarded her PGCE by the University of York. Professor Janet was a gifted linguist and spoke fluent German, French, and Italian. In 1971 and 1972, she taught English in Geneva, Switzerland, and from 1972 to 1977, she taught at Siegen University in Germany, prior to joining the faculty of Richmond in the fall of 1977. Professor Janet served the university as assistant professor of English for academic purposes and as foundation's program coordinator for 33 years until her untimely death in October of last year. Professor Janet pioneered the concept of a foundations program at university level where non-native speakers of English were taught the basic principles of the discipline was being supported by specially designed parallel classes to improve their English reading, writing and research skills to enable them to embark on the full degree program at the university. She ensured that these courses carried academic credit so that the students felt enfranchised and part of the university community. Richmond's Foundations program was the first of its kind in the United Kingdom and has been publicly acknowledged as such. Professor Janet produced a number of excellent publications for faculty and students on the Foundations program and was a scholar of international reputation. She presented widely at conferences in the United Kingdom, Ireland, Europe, North Africa and Canada. Her unstinting service to the university and its students was exemplary. She ensured that hundreds of academically gifted students improved their English language skills to enable them to successfully pursue their academic careers at Richmond University and beyond their studies in their professional lives. Her contribution to Richmond University is as immeasurable as is her loss. She personally ensured the retention of countless excellent students was only limitation was their lack of English language skills. She nurtured students so as to ensure that they successfully entered into the university's degree program and were able to graduate from the university in due course. She gave unstintingly of her expertise, time, kindness, and empathy to students and colleagues at Richmond University. Professor Janet was a rare and exceptional human being whose personal warmth and energy was clear to all who came into contact with her. She was an imaginative, passionate, and innovative teacher for whom teaching was truly a vocation. It is fitting that she should be honored at this graduation ceremony because graduation day was her favorite day in the university calendar when she was proud to witness students from her foundations program confidently striding across the platform to receive their degrees. Julia's beloved husband, Claude, and her son, Patrick, will be accepting this honorary degree on her behalf. I ask that they now come forward and approach the Chancellor. vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Richmond, the American International University of London, I hereby confer upon Julia Anna Jennett, the degree of Doctor of Human Letters, honoris causa, 
to all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In witness, therefore, we present you with this hood and diploma. Thank you for all the work. It's my pleasure to welcome to the stage uh, Sanjay Raja, who has just graduated, who is going to provide a farewell address on behalf of all the students. During my time at Richmond, I have become intimately acquainted with airports. In my semesters at Richmond University, I made countless trips to London airports as I said goodbye and welcomed back friends from all over the world. Within the few years I spent at Richmond, I have met individuals that have gone on to become as close as brothers and sisters to me. From Kosovo to Zimbabwe, and as far out as Brazil, our flights have, for a time at least, led us to London. Good morning, trustees, distinguished faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, fellow graduates. <laughs> Having been asked to speak today, I was faced with the challenge of trying to capture what this occasion means to each and every one of us, and found that such a task was next to impossible. And in saying that, I've decided to give up on attempting to describe the entire Richmond experience, and instead, focus on two points airports and destinations. The first point is straightforward. There isn't a single Richmond student that has not become overly familiar with airports. For most of us, our passports are an extension of ourselves. Through our travels, we have taken the opportunity to explore more parts of the world than many would have in their lifetime. Through my own travels, I've seen, experienced, and lived through situations that have given me a completely different perspective on life and education. And because of it, I can probably name more capital cities than any average citizen, and I know exactly where I can stay for free with friends from all over the world. Yeah. It was here at airports that I would say goodbye to my friends and at airports where I would welcome them back in anticipation for a new semester. But soon, we will be coming to the end of this part of our lives where the excitement of starting a new semester can no longer exist. Possibly the most frightening thing about today is that this time, our paths will not necessarily lead back to London airports. However, the friends we gained and knowledge collected, not just in the classroom, but over dinner in the cafeteria, will remain with us forever. It was those conversations in the cafeteria, cafe, or common room where I learned the most about my life and myself as we talked about everything imaginable till all hours of the night. However, with all the joy, passion, and excitement here, I know that within most of us, there is a significant level of uncertainty in the future and sadness in departure. Our flights are about to take off, some in different directions, and for some, with no return tickets, back to a place we have so proudly called our home for the past few years. This leads me to my final point, destination. When I started my undergraduate career at Richmond, I was hoping to come out having reached some form of destination. And at the beginning, I thought this was it, graduation. Graduation was my destination. But in this moment, I realized that I'm anywhere but at my destination. In fact, I think I'm 
I think that the most valuable thing I've learned in my years here is that there is no final destination. We are all in transit and will continue to be in transit. I've come to see that many individuals are so focused on reaching a destination, they forget all it took to reach this point. They forgot the journey. And that, I believe, is what life is all about. In the, journey to in the journey to this moment in my life, I've learned many things. But above all else, the ways that love has shaped me has become increasingly clear. Love from family, love from friends, love from what we do, have all undeniably changed each and every one of us. With this as a foundation, the support that we have received from our Richmond community has allowed us to connect and strengthen relationships that will continue to form us. So before I leave you today, there's one thing left to say. I wish all that have been a part of our journey to be acknowledged, our parents, our families, and our friends. Without their guidance, support, and most of all love, none of us will be sitting here today making this last connecting moment at Richmond University. Here in London, a city known for greatness, I wish you all the same. I wish you all greatness in what you do. I wish you all the success that the world can offer. And I pray that in the midst of our journey, as we say goodbye to the ones that have stood by us, that we remember the journey that got us to this point. Thank you. Graduates, <clears throat> uh, your graduation today does not mark the end of your relationship with your university. Being a Richmond graduate is something special that connects you with nearly 7,000 former students in over 140 countries in the world. You're now part of the alumni network. The word alumni comes from the Latin alere, to nourish. And your link with Richmond, your friends, you made here, and the faculty and staff you met will remain a nourishing presence throughout your life. Alumni services and its programs will help you maintain these relationships and make new contacts benefit your career and life. Like your families and friends here today, we the faculty and staff at Richmond are proud of you, our alumni, and would like to keep in touch, and like you to keep in touch to support you and celebrate your and the university's future successes. Before, the, before asking the Chancellor to close, uh, I would like to read a few words um, that were spoken by a former president uh, of the Richmond University, Dr. William Petrick, who died this past week. And in his obituary, uh, there was a description of what he had done at the university and what the university had meant to him. And he had shared his thoughts with students at like one graduation. And I thought, you now, in order to honor his, his life and commitment to Richmond, I would read you these few remarks that he made at an earlier graduation in the 1980s. Students, your Richmond College education has given you insights into your freedom. Freedom ultimately is an expression of one's humanness in all its complexity. And a Richmond education deals with that complexity. Your education has also equipped you with some skills to deal with the necessary unfolding of your freedom, an unfolding which will occasionally surprise you in the years ahead. I would ask uh, the audience to please stand as, during the, not now, uh, during the recessional as we, as we uh, process out uh, until the uh, platform party and the students have left the hall. Chancellor. I now declare this 2011 graduation ceremony closed. I congratulate all of the graduates and their families and wish you the very best for the future. Thank you. Thank you.